have in front of me the Hick Vision um, Turbo 3.0 uh, hybrid uh, DVR. Basically, this will support uh, high definition uh, HD uh, TVI, but also um, IP AHD, uh, and it's backward compatible with, we'll say, 960H analog cameras as well. So um, it's available with free shipping directly from freetv.ie. It's part of a wider range of um, Hikvision DVRs we have. We have the two megapixel, the three megapixel, we have it in the four, uh, the eight, and the 16 way. To give you an idea of the storage capacity of something like this, uh, it can handle, the four and the eight can handle uh, a single, um, uh, up to six terabyte hard drive, and the 16 way can take two uh, six way or six terabyte hard drives, so a total of 12 terabytes of storage capacity on it. Um, so, obviously, 3 megapixel, the, the, the picture quality on it is massively impressive. Uh, one of the main reasons we've gone for Hikvision is uh, the hybrid nature of it, the fact that it can support. Um, all the different technologies. That's been a huge problem, we'll say, with all the different technologies that that all of these can go onto a single DVR, that it comes in at a very competitive price, that it comes in at a great um, product spec in terms of the 3 megapixel, is really high picture quality, and um, the fact that the interface on it in terms of setup for remote viewing and all the rest of it is so simple and so uh, consistent right across the range. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go right through, we'll say, um, our um, of what we physically get, we'll have a look at the DVR in some detail here, and then we'll just give a demonstration of the interface on it. So this is the outer box that comes in here, and we have a user manual, which is in English, um, um, a CD. We have an external power unit with a three-pin plug. We have our cables for connecting our SATA drive come along with it. We have our screws here for mounting the hard drive directly onto it. We have detailed videos that will cover all of the ones, and we have the same videos covering all of the Hikvision ones in terms of hard drives, um, setting up of uh, remote viewing all the rest of it, because it's the same regardless of which uh, DVR within the Hikvision range we're using. Um, and we have a remote control and the mouse here as well. So I'll just come to the front of the unit here with a quick glance. And so when we look at the thing, we'll see that we can choose the various channels here. We have the PTZ control, and we also have a USB port here, which we use for upgrading firmware or extracting recordings. And if I just rotate the unit around, and we look at the back, so this is an eight-way here. So there's eight inputs here as well. And um, then we have our video output here. We have our USB port here. Um, uh, we could use it, of course, for adding a mouse here as well, or on the front port indeed. HDMI output, VGA output, and then what we have is um, a total of four audio ins and a single audio out. We have our LAN connection here for networking or for adding on IP. And then what we have is the RS485. Uh, and very importantly in terms of this, what we have here is a total of eight uh, trigger alarms. So that's really important, uh, particularly when you're setting it up to integrate within um, um, you know, a security system. So if we look at the interface here, if I had to log in through the password thing, uh, I might just do that quickly actually, just log out here now. Uh, and if I um, do um, a log out at this point, it'll just prompt me for the password. And the default password we set up on this was uh, one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a okay? So that'd be a combination of numbers and letters. letters. So if we come back here, just the main uh, features inside will be something like the playback menu, where we can choose the different cameras and the period and then the time, the date and then the time period we want to play back on. So we have only a single camera set up here um, for this particular thing, which we can see in the background there. Um, then our ability to export recordings, so we can choose exactly which um, camera and over what time period, and we can have a start and end time in relation to it. And again, we covered that in some detail. Um, so we can do a search um, in relation to things. So they have new features there like plate search, uh, facial, facial recognition, things like that. So it's a pretty high tech features in relation to how we can pick up things. Uh, we have a manual set up here in terms of how we're going to set uh, up for the different cameras, uh, alarm settings, things like that. Uh, and then we have the hard drive settings here. This is where we would specify the hard drive. And right now we have no hard drive set up on this uh, particular DVR. Uh, then we have our recording here, and this is pretty cool in terms of how we can come along, we'll say, and we're set up for continuous recording here, so we have an ability here, we'll say, to come along, we'll say, and set uh, events to operate on certain um, uh, blocks here, and what we can do then is we can replicate that directly across um, um, all the other cameras here by coming down and uh, choosing how we're going to uh, copy it 
uh, over. So we can do a copy here and I uh, will say that we're going to do it for um, this camera and this camera. So three and four. I will just go OK for instance. And if I come down now, I go into camera two. Um, I'll see that it's exactly as is. But uh, if we go to camera three where we change the settings, we'll see that um, we have the event. So we have motion detection, alarm and um, the various things. So we'll just back up out of there. Now if we actually come along here, there's just the different parameters we can set. And then there's advanced as well in terms of how we want to be overwriting on the records. And there's a holiday setting there as well. So we can set that we'll have different recording setups for holiday periods. So if we go into the camera thing here, um, it's an interesting point here, we'll say. So there's a few restrictions, we'll say, you want to be aware of. In terms of IP cameras, there's a maximum of two IP cameras can be added to the system. And if we're going to be using different technologies, like, we'll say, TVI or AHD or um, IP, it's, um, we have to pair them, we'll say, in terms of, um, it's not that we have to have two of the one type of camera, but um, if, we'll say, uh, these here, A1 and A2, are paired together. What we have to make sure is that both types of technology, both cameras are using the same technology if paired together, okay? Um, and so that's just a restriction, and it's just about the ha where the hardware is on it. But it doesn't really restrict you in terms of how you're doing it. Probably what most people would be doing would be using the old analog cameras, and maybe AHD or TVI with the old cameras, or maybe just all AHD or all TVI. So it does give a lot of flexibility in there. Um, so if we just bring up the, the screen here in terms of what we're recording in the background and uh, then we have the image and then the PTZ, we can set up PTZ controls, we can set up how we want to configure the routes, all the rest of it and then we have motion detection here and we can break it into blocks and look at certain areas and set the sensitivity levelling. We have privacy masking so we can block out certain zones and that's obviously important particularly for public areas, uh, video tampering, video loss, um, VCA. So we just go down and there's various settings there again. So we have further, more detailed videos. The configuration one is what some people will look at quite a bit. And in particular, they'll be looking in relation to the networking area of it here. And there's two basic ways of setting it up. You can set it up on a static IP address, which is the most secure way of doing it. Or you can do it on the QR codes where we're effectively doing through the cloud. And that just uh, is a lot quicker and faster. Um, but it, it's just not quite as secure as the other way of doing it. So, you know, there's a mixture of how people are using that. We have the maintenance here as well then, um, and then the QR codes that we'll be using for doing verification, things like that, and we can see the verification code here. Um, I'll just back out there, and well, now we'll come back in, and finally we're into maintenance and shutdown. So we have the, probably the most important videos we have accompanying these ones, is how to download the app uh, onto your phone, uh, and then how to configure it to allow for the remote uh, viewing uh, onto it. And we're basically given two options there that I briefly mentioned. So we've covered this in a lot of detail. I think the Higvision stuff, simply because of the price range that we're coming in at, uh, the capabilities of it, and then the range of accessory products that we have, the power units, the cameras, uh, the huge quantity cable, etc., all the rest of it. I think um, by banking onto the Higvision as our main, main and primary DVRs, it's going to be very, very successful for us, simply because they're very much the market leader, and they've made themselves so attractive by simply saying, let's come in at a, at a really attractive price, high quality, um, a picture image, easy setup, and then have it hybrid virtually across all the main technologies that are out there. So that's it anyway, an overview of the Hikvision uh, Turbo 3 megapixel range of hybrid DVRs.